다음 발표자 소개해 드리겠습니다. 일본의 변호사이자 컨설턴트 카와이케 님이 발표를 준비해 주셨습니다. 일본 이 블록체인을 기반으로 하는 리걸 이슈에 대해서 설명해 주시겠습니다. 앞으로 모시도록 하겠습니다. 네, 카와이케 여러분 큰 박수로 환영해 주세요. 좋아했어? 아, good morning. Uh, uh, my name is Ken Kawai. Uh, I'm a partner of the Japanese law firm Anderson Mori Tomotsune and the legal, legal advisor to the Japan Cryptocurrency Business Association in Tokyo. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this event. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about Japanese regulation ch regulatory stance changes. Uh, uh, as you may know, Japan is the first country to introduce cryptocurrency regulations uh, last year. So uh, uh, the FATF, uh, the International Organization for Anti-Monetary Laundering, uh, recommended uh, some kind of regulations to the crypto exchange in 2015. Uh, after that, uh, Japanese government decided to legislate uh, uh, some of the rules under the Payment Services Act to prevent uh, anti monetary laundering and to protect uh, Japanese users. And the uh, law uh, was enacted last year. After that, there are so many things happened, uh, including a big hacking I incident, and then uh, Japanese regulations uh, becoming a little bit, uh, uh, little bit uh, more tight tightened. Uh, today, I'd like to. Uh, there are so many things to speak, but today I'd like to focus on three things. Uh, number one. Uh, change of regulatory stance for the crypto, crypto exchange. Uh, number two, I see a regulation in Japan. Number three, uh, regulatory sandbox are applicable to blockchain projects. Uh, it's more broad uh, topic. So first of all, I'd like to talk about a change of regulatory stance in Japan. Uh, as I said, uh, the legislation uh, was drafted and prepared in 2016. Uh, this cryptocurrency regulations under the Payment Services Act entered into force in April last year. In these regulations, those who would like to run crypto exchange, including crypto crypto exchange, must have the license to operate it. At that time, there were more than 30 exchanges are operated in Japan. Then uh, until the December 2017, last year, uh, 16 exchanges obtained crypto uh, exchange licenses, and other 16 exchanges were allowed to continue their business without license during the grace period. Uh, CoinCheck was one of the uh, uh, non-licensed exchange which was allowed, continued to allow to trade. Then uh, the tragedy was happened. In on 26th of Jul J January this year, uh, CoinCheck was hacked uh, and uh, approximately 500 million USD equivalent name was hacked uh, from the CoinCheck. Uh, this is a turning point of the regulations. Before that, uh, the regulation was uh, considered as one of the most friendly uh, to this industry. Of course, uh, this is a very new one, but uh, everybody welcomes this uh, new act. But after that, 
uh, because of this incident, uh, the Japanese regulator FSA uh, tightened their policy. They stepped into the uh, lots of exchanges uh, during the on-site in inspections to find uh, whether this their security uh, system is good or not, or they are doing the proper AML KYC procedures. And in March this year, the FSA established uh, the study, study group of regulating virtual currency exchange business. Um, the members uh, consist of lawyers, uh, think tank guys, or some other financial institutions uh, to study uh, the proper regulations uh, throughout the crypto exchange, not only the crypto exchange, but crypto business uh, overall. Uh, they have done uh, four meetings so far. Uh, and after September, I think they will resume it. Uh, they will re make a recommendation to how to regulate uh, crypto business later this year. And after the on-site in inspections in June this year, uh, 30 non-licensed exchanges uh, who were operating under the uh, during the grace period were forced to withdraw the, from the market. They are disappeared. Also, uh, as for the license exchanges, the FSA issued business improvement order to seven license exchanges. Uh, those exchanges are currently implementing business improvement plan uh, to normalize their business, uh, which includes uh, Bitflyer, Coin, or those other guys, Bitbank. Uh, most of the major Japanese crypto exchanges were re received uh, this kind of order. Uh, currently, some of them are expecting to finish uh, the improvement plan either in September or in October. And uh, coincidentally, uh, the Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association applied for the FSA's approval to become the certified self-regulatory organization. In Japan, most of the financial institutions have such kind of uh, self-regulatory organizations. Uh, of course, uh, in this field, uh, the hard law is also important, but soft law is more important uh, because the uh, change of the industry, the uh, speed of the change of the industry is very fast. What uh, the FSA found uh, in, during the on-site inspection, uh, they found that uh, the crypto exchange system security and AML CFT were significantly weak and must be improved. So they made such an order. And during this improvement period, the exchange who received the business improvement order cannot list new tokens until they successfully implementing uh, their business improvement plan. So currently, uh, the new token listing are all stopped here, uh, stopped in Japan right now. And also, it's very difficult to do ICOs in Japan right now. But uh, you, may, you need to understand that Japan is the first country to regulate uh, the cryptocurrency in the hard law. And uh, as a consequence, uh, the Japan is the first country to face uh, the difficulties to regulate the cryptocurrency business. So in a sense, Japan is doing a very big experiment how to regulate 
uh, this industry. So I guess uh, this is a back and forth. Uh, so it started very, it started as very friendly regulations and becoming uh, one of the very tough uh, regulation currently. But I expect there are so many back and forth uh, will occur uh, next, maybe next this year and next year. As, a, as I speak, uh, as I mentioned, uh, currently the Japanese regulation becomes uh, more uh, uh, harsher than before. Uh, there's a silver lining in the cloud. The Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association, the JVCEA, which consists of all the licensed exchange, is likely to become the FSA certified self regulatory organization SRO in September this year. As I talked, uh, because uh, the speed of the change of the industry uh, is very, very fast. Uh, it's very difficult to regulate everything in the legislation or hard law. So it's better to delegate some power to the self-regulatory organization. In the Payment Services Act, uh, there's some article to state that uh, the FSA can delegate some power to the self-regulatory organization certified by the FSA. So uh, the currently, uh, the JVCAA is drafting the new self-regulatory rules, including uh, system securities, ML KYC process, ICOs, blah, blah, blah. And uh, self-regulatory rules is more flexible than the hard law. So uh, it's very important to eye on what kind of regulations, self-regulations, uh, they will implement. And another good news is that uh, in mid-August, actually the last week, uh, the FSA resumed review of the cryptocurrency exchange license applications. Uh, there are very long queue to get the license. More than 100 uh, companies are applying for this license. Uh, but uh, after the coincheck problem, um, the FSA was very, very busy to inspect uh, the existing exchanges. So uh, the new application, a review of the new application has been stopped uh, until very recently. They announced that they will resume it. So uh, maybe in the next month or in October, uh, some of the exchanges will be, will be able to get the Let's let, uh, the license. So, of course, uh, the, they need to, uh, the FSA put the bar to get the, le uh, the license uh, higher than before, much, much higher than before. Uh, but uh, at least they resumed uh, the process. So, uh, those who have the good system, good AML, KYC, procedures uh, will be able to have the license. Also, the FSS study group I mentioned before uh, would be likely to make recommendation to the FSA on how to achieve the fairness of crypto market, including regulations on crypto uh, margin trading. As you may know, uh, there are lots of uh, market manipulations are going on in the crypto market. Uh, it's not a fair market. Uh, there are so many scams. Uh, there are so many bad tradings, uh, pushing the market down um, with the real uh, flows. Uh, those, uh, those kind of uh, bad behavior must be prohibited. So uh, the FSA study group uh, is likely to make a recommendation uh, to uh, make the market more 
accurate, uh, appropriate. So the next topic is ICO regulations in Japan. The FSA announced on October uh, last year uh, the warnings against ICOs. It states that ICO tokens may fall under the definition of securities under the FIEA, a Japanese securities law, or virtual currency under the Payment Services Act. So if uh, the token falls either of the definition, then they must follow these rules. So the de and also the FSA study group currently, uh, uh, their their eyes on the ICO also, and the group would be likely to make a recommendation uh, to the FSA on how to regulate ICOs within this year. So. Uh, Actually, uh, we have some uh, argument, uh, discussions with the FSA. Uh, they have not yet decided uh, what kind of rule is most appropriate to conduct ICOs. Uh, I don't think they will ban the ICO. Uh, they will allow some of the good ICOs, but uh, wh what kind of regulation is appropriate is still under the discussion. But please note, at, at this stage, uh, it is not so easy to conduct ICOs in Japan to sell the token uh, to the Japanese president. Uh, it is very difficult at this moment. So this is uh, what they are discussing, or we are discussing right now. Uh, as you know, there's a UTT token and a security token. As for the UTT token, the Payment Service Act uh, would likely to be applicable. On the other hand, for the security token, the FIEA, a Japanese security le securities regulation, uh, is likely to be applicable. So as for the PSA, uh, as for the UTT token, a uh, token must be sold through the licensed exchanges unless the issuer has such license. The licensed exchange need to consult with FSA prior to the token sales. So uh, from the point of view of the token issuer, the token issuer needs to talk with the license exchange in Japan, and the uh, license exchange will do the due diligence of the tokens, and they will prepare the paper documents to submit to the FSA, then they go to the FSA. Uh, after they get the, uh, written, uh, the oral approval from the FSA, uh, the license exchange uh, will sell the token on behalf of the token issuer. Uh, this is what we are thinking uh, right now. As for the securities token, uh, the Japanese crypto exchange cannot uh, deal with uh, these kind of security tokens because it's a security. Uh, the security must be sold or offered by the financial instruments business operators. Uh, it's a kind of broker dealers. Of course, there are some exemptions for the pri uh, private sales, but the uh, number of the uh, private sales you can offer is limited to uh, 50. So uh, if you'd like to do the public sale, uh, you need to contact uh, with the financial instruments business operator. Also, the uh, this uh, financial instrument and business operator needs to consult with the FSA first uh, prior to the offerings. But uh, as I said, currently 
uh, we are discussing uh, these roles. And uh, I think uh, the study group will make a recommendation within this year. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure whether uh, the new regulations will be submitted to the diet next year or not. But uh, uh, this is what are the Japanese uh, regulators on the uh, industries are thinking right now. So these explanations are for the crypt crypto currency business, and of course there's a lots of lots of other blockchain areas. So I'd like to talk about the regulatory sandbox system uh, newly implemented in Japan for the blockchain project. It's not a pro. It this sandbox system is very new. Uh, in June two, 2018, this year, the headquarters of J for Japan Economic Revital Revitalization of the Communist Secretariat, Secretary Act opened a cross-government one-stop desk for the regul regulatory sandbox scheme in Japan. Uh, this team is called Regulatory Sandbox Teams in Japan. Uh, this is the very new system uh, in Japan, and uh, it can be used uh, not only by the Japanese, but as well as overseas companies. Basically, uh, it's for the testing project. And of course, uh, it's not a system to, let's say, temporarily seize the current regulations, but if there's an area of very gray zone, uh, the cabinet, uh, this team uh, will help the companies to, uh, oper to guide uh, that they can uh, doing the business properly. Sometimes uh, they temporarily, temporarily they are allowed to do the business uh, without license or those kind of things. Uh, everybody will be able to apply uh, if you submit the project plan. This uh, sandbox can be applicable to all the industry, but uh, in the basic policy, uh, blockchain projects are explicitly mentioned as one of the prospective and suitable areas uh, together with those of AI, IoT and big data. So blockchain is one of the main area for this uh, regulatory sandbox. Uh, as you know, the JETRO, the Japanese uh, association who are working for the uh, overseas project, uh, they uh, introduce uh, lots of uh, Japanese companies to abroad and also uh, the lots of overseas companies to Japan, uh, they, are, they are stating that they are happy to uh, provide uh, help, assistance, uh, if you would like to apply for the regulatory sandbox. Currently, uh, I don't think uh, there is a significant case uh, that use this regulatory sandbox system, but uh, this is the system not only by the FSA or uh, Ministry of Economy, but it's a, uh, the cross-governmental one-stop system. So uh, I think if, uh, if you have any interest, uh, it's worth trying. So this is a good news uh, for the blockchain industry. Uh, in a summary, uh, uh, Japanese regulation started as a very friendly to the blockchain and crypto, then uh, turned uh, more harsh uh, after the coinjack problem. But uh, currently, uh, uh, the most difficult uh, time has passed. So uh, I think uh, there's a there's a, a good chance uh, to do the business in Japan again. Okay, 
Uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you.